The federal government has declared Monday, June 14th as a public holiday to mark this year's Democracy Day. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, President Muhammad Buhari has retreated his threat to the indigenous people of Biafra, saying the police and military will be organized to go after them. Buhari stated this in an interview with Arise TV on Thursday. The president also described IPOB as a dot in a circle, therefore they will have no access to anywhere. He said IPOB is just like a dot in a circle, even if they have to exit, they will have no access to anywhere. And the way they are spread all over the country, having businesses and properties, I don't think IPOB knows what they are talking about. In any case, we say we will talk to them in the language that they understand. We will organize the police and the military to pursue them. That is what we can do and we will do. At number 9, the police command in Imo State has arrested a suspected notorious native doctor, 40-year-old Uzuamaka Uzuayangu, who allegedly prepares charms for members of the indigenous people of Biafra and the Eastern Security Network. The Commissioner of Police in Imo State, Abu Tuyaru, confirmed the arrest in a statement signed by the command spokesman, Bala Elkana. The statement revealed the police also arrested nine suspects who took part in the recent attack and unrest in the state. Yaro said the arrest was successful following painstaking investigation carried out by the command's tactical units and urged criminal elements who are still in possession of police arms to willingly return them. At number 8, the Federal Executive Council has approved a draft supplementary budget of 895 billion naira for the year 2021. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, made this known while briefing State House correspondents on the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting held on Wednesday and presided over by President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja. The minister added that the next step would be to present a bill to that effect to the National Assembly for approval. At number 7, Ocean State Government has announced plans to issue ID cards to Fulani Bororo headsmen as part of its procedures of data capturing and profiling of headers in the state. The chairman of the Committee on Peaceful Coexistence between Fulani Bororo and farmers in Oshun State, Mudashiru Togun, disclosed this at a meeting held with heads of Fulani and Bororo on Wednesday in Oshobo. He said the data capturing exercise was part of the government's effort to strengthen the cordial relationship and peaceful coexistence between Fulani headers and Yoruba farmers in the state. At number 6, Yoruba Nation agitators are planning to hold peaceful protests across the southwest region on Saturday, June 12th. The Yoruba Nation protesters have held rallies across southwest states, including Oshun, Ogun, Ekiti, and Ondo in the past. Also, the National Association of Nigerian Students, under the leadership of its national president, Comrade Sunday Asefon, had declared June 12 as National Day of Peaceful Protest to call on the government to act decisively towards addressing the current state of insecurity. In a live broadcast on Wednesday night, Olayomi Koiki, the spokesman of Yoruba rights activist Sunday Igboho, called on governors of the Southwest region to cooperate with the peaceful protesters during the exercise. At number 5, President Muhammad Buhari has said that the NSAS protest against police brutality, which was organized by youths across the country last year, was aimed at removing him from office. Speaking on Arise TV on Thursday morning, the president stated that those who participated in the protest have made Nigeria unattractive to external investors. When asked how he could improve foreign direct investment in Nigeria, Buhari said this question was answered last year when there was the NSAS protest. You remember the young people who wanted to march here and remove me? I assembled members of the executive council and asked each of them to go to states, speak to traditional leaders and businessmen, because nobody will invest in an insecure environment. So I told them to tell the youths that if they want jobs, they should behave themselves, make sure Nigeria is secure so that people can come and invest. At number four, a 28-year-old history enthusiast, Damien T., who slapped the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, in a viral video, risked up to three years in jail. Damien appeared in court for the first time on Thursday after being in detention since the incident on Tuesday. The 28-year-old, who is expected to be convicted of assaulting a public figure, told investigators he acted without thinking. The charge carries a maximum of three-year jail sentence and a fine of 45,000 euros, that is $55,000, although the court will take into account the defendant's clean criminal record and any expression of remorse. At number three, the Nigerian government has made a move to regulate social media platforms, despite widespread criticism. 
On Thursday, the National Broadcasting Commission in a newspaper advertorial asked all social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and online broadcasting service providers in Nigeria to apply for broadcast license. The announcement was signed by NBC's Director General Armstrong Idachaba, who said the application is in line with the provision of the National Broadcasting Act. At number two, President Muhammad Buhari has commissioned the just completed Lagos Ibadan Railway project at Mobolaji Johnson Railway Station, Ebutemeta, Lagos State. In a statement on Thursday by the Special Advisor to the President, Femi Adeshino, Buhari described the feat as another milestone in the drive of this administration to revitalize the railway system and establish it as a choice mode of transportation for both passengers and freight. Recall that the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, who was already in Lagos on Wednesday for the event, took a last-minute inspection tour of the terminals and substations along the 156-kilometer route. Speaking at the flag off on Thursday, Amechi revealed that over 1,000 houses were demolished in Ogun State for the construction of the $1.5 billion Lagos Ibadan rail line. Finally, at number one, the federal government has declared Monday, June 14th as a public holiday to mark this year's Democracy Day. However, the government warned against any form of agitation capable of threatening the peace and unity of the country. The Minister of Interior, Raouf Aregbeshola, made the declaration on Thursday in a statement released by the Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Shwaib Belgore. The statement, titled FG Declares Monday, June 14, 2021, public holiday to mark this year's Democracy Day celebration, read in part. The federal government has congratulated Nigerians on this occasion and urged all citizens to support the present administration in its efforts at ensuring a united and prosperous nation. Arab Bashola said any form of agitation that threatens the unity of the country should be shunned for the good of all, saying the space known as Nigeria would be a haven of peace, unity and progress if all citizens love his or her neighbor and embrace the spirit of brotherliness. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.